All right, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're gonna be talking about all of those storms that we are expecting. Now there's a potential kind of smaller nor'easter that could be taking place along the eastern seaboard. We also have that very major storm out west. This is gonna be an extremely low pressure system and it's just gonna be a very, very strong storm in general. This is also gonna bring a very major snowstorm alongside of it because it's gonna have enough cold air around to bring a major amount of snowfall to the Rockies. Now let's get straight into things in just a moment. Anyways, before I get into this video, be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. For today's comment of the day, I want to know, do you think this will be the most major snowstorm of the fall time? That's going to be from now all the way through the beginning of December. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get straight into this video, though, and first things first, we're taking a look at our simulated radar here from the NAM 12KM model to take a look at the storminess out east. This is going to be approximately earlier this morning that I'm even making this video. We have some rainfall around for the eastern United States. Obviously, the yellow is indicating some heavier rainfall going on. But by the time we reach about, I would say, tonight at about 8 p.m., it becomes more scattered in the more inland areas. But we see that area off the southeast coast. That is that kind of very minor nor'easter-like storm that is offshore. And this has pretty good potential to bring some rainfall there anywhere from about the Carolinas all the way up through into southern New England. So let's watch this play out by the time we reach about 11 a.m. on Saturday, and that's going to be October 9th. You can see that this one is really gaining intensity. We see a lot of those darker greens and yellows. This does have to do with that tropical disturbance, by the way, that you might see offshore of the East Coast, but I don't think it's going to be tropical by any means by the time it's affecting us here on the eastern seaboard. Now, this is by the time we're reaching about... 3 a.m. on Sunday, October 10th, and you can see a lot of those heavier pockets of rainfall make their way on shore to North Carolina, Virginia, the Delmarva there as well, uh, and that is going to bring potentially one to two to maybe more inches of rainfall. We have to switch to a lower resolution model or European model here by the time we're reaching about 6 a.m. on Sunday, but we can see this rainfall is now anywhere from Virginia all the way up through New Jersey and Pennsylvania as well as New York, and then by the time we reach about maybe 4 or 5 a.m. here on Monday, October 11th, we see that rainfall is now over southern New England. Now, as we zoom out on the same frame, we can see we missed a lot. So we're going to actually have to take a national view and backtrack a little bit to see what's happening here because obviously everything is already blowing up by the time we are reaching after the weekend. So what we're going to do is move on and take a look at those things transpire. Now, first things first, we have to look at the total rainfall here for the eastern United States. If you're anywhere in the grays, greens, or blues, you are under one inch of rainfall. And for about a one-week period, I don't think that's too extreme, or maybe more, more like four or five days here, better yet. Uh, but that is going to be enough to be a good amount of rainfall, if you will, but it's not going to be too big of a concern. It's these reds that I'm mostly concerned about here. That is where we're at. Uh, anywhere from about two to five inches of rainfall here in these red pockets. So North Carolina, Virginia, especially there, also Georgia, and then a bit of the mid-Atlantic like D.C., Maryland, uh, Delaware, Pennsylvania, and New Jersey as well. Those are the areas that are of most concern. You could tell this storm has really switched up because just a couple of days ago when we were showing this total rainfall, a majority of it was around kind of the Smoky Mountains, uh, an area south of there. And now it's mostly here on the eastern seaboard. And what's happened is, is this kind of nor'easter-like storm. I'm calling it that because it's not going to be very uh, major whatsoever. But this nor'easter-like storm is going to eat up most of the energy that would have been in that inland system. Uh, so that has switched things up significantly here in the shorter range. Now let's take a more national view here. This is back on October 8th again, so we're backtracking all the way to the early weekend here at about 3 p.m. and we can see a low pressure center is located over Utah. This is snowstorm number one for the Rockies and I already know it's gonna happen. A lot of you are gonna experience this snowstorm uh, and you're gonna think that that was the one I've been talking about all along and be like, oh, that wasn't major at all. But, but trust me, this is not nearly the snowstorm we've been talking about. And by the time we see about maybe 3 or 4 a.m. here on Sunday, October 10th, this low pressure center has moved up into North Dakota and Minnesota. And then we see our next storm system moving in through the Pacific Northwest and Pacific uh, coast of Canada there. 
We also have a low pressure center that develops here in the south central United States, a 997 millibar low pressure center over Oklahoma, and this is going to be our first threat of severe weather. Uh, as you can see, this is our convective available potential energy, or our CAPE. This is basically thunderstorm food, and this is the most we've had in weeks, and we see it set up over Texas and Oklahoma, a, a majority of it here, uh, and that's going to be kind of Sunday night into Monday morning time frame and actually the storm prediction center here has eyeballed this threat on day four now by this point we have a 15 percent chance of severe weather within 25 miles of a given location there in the yellow and then a 30 percent chance of severe weather within 25 miles of a given location there in the orange so north of dallas southeast of oklahoma city is the area we are eyeballing so we're going to keep a very close eye on that might be going live for that severe weather event kind of don't know at this point now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to see this very major snowstorm move in. Could be one of the biggest of the entire snow season. All right, now here we are taking a look and this is going to be about 6 or maybe 8 a.m. here on Monday, October 11th. We can see that low pressure center there that is developed in the south central United States has now moved further northward. Could bring quite a bit of rainfall, but we do see some snowfall developing there for northern Nevada areas in Idaho. Uh, even Wyoming and Montana. Now, by time we reach about 12 hours later, you can see heavy snowfall has developed there for Arizona, Utah, Colorado, Wyoming, Idaho, and even Montana there. Uh, and it, we have a 996 millibar low pressure center there over Arizona. Snowfall has already been occurring for most of these regions for a little less than 12 hours. Shortly after that frame we just took a look at before this one, uh, that heavy snowfall became pretty widespread. So we've already seen 12 hours. Let's move 12 hours later. And as you can see, we still have heavy snowfall going on here for the Rockies. We have a 997 millibar low pressure center that is now horseshoed around the four corner states. And now in a concerning trend, it kind of turns back west, which is just another factor, which is prolonging this storm's track, which is going to make the snowfall last even longer. There will be severe weather taking place in Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas again. We'll take, about, we'll take a look at that at the end of the video. But the biggest concern here is this heavy snowfall that is still ongoing for I, or sorry, yeah, Utah, Wyoming, and Colorado. I almost said Idaho, but it's not seeing it at this point. Now, 12 hours later than that frame on 6, or probably about 8 a.m. here on Thursday, October 14th, we see that there is still a little bit of snowfall left over for Wyoming and Colorado, but it is coming to an end by this point. And we see a 997 millibar low pressure center, very strong storm over South Dakota by this point. Now, I just want to take a moment to mention this. A lot of people have mentioned that still their local weather channels and even the weather channel have not mentioned this storm yet. And I want to put this out there so that everybody knows they will mention it and it's going to be either today, tomorrow, or the next day, but they will mention it. This storm has been appearing on all of the major models for more than three days now. They have consistently showed this. This storm is not going anywhere, and it's not even that far out anymore, so they need to start acknowledging this one. I have no idea why they don't mention these things earlier on. I think it's a really you know good thing to trust the public with this type of information while disclaiming that it is far out, and that's what I've done for the past few days. But now it's time to start talking about this storm as if it is going to happen to some degree. The intensity, the amounts are a bit of a question mark, but it is going to happen at this point. Um, and you will see your channels, your local channels and the weather channel hop on board on this one at some point, like I said today, tomorrow or the next day, and they will act like it's a brand new storm that they didn't even know about before this point. But that is a lie. They obviously, everybody in the weather community knows about this storm this major snowstorm that has been trending on the models for three days. I've seen this happen for years, and it's very annoying. Anyway, let's take a look at that total snowfall on the European model. And this is obviously very concerning. If you're anywhere in the grays or the blues, you're under six inches of snowfall. Which, for this time of year, six inches of snowfall would be quite a bit. I mean, that's not a tiny bit of snow. That is, that is quite a bit. Although we have much higher amounts around. Uh, we have the purples, which is going to be your six to ten inch region. We also have the pinks, which is going to be your 10 to 20 inch region. But we move over to those pastels and we see a lot of that for Utah, Wyoming, portions of Colorado. And that is where we're at 20 inches plus. This model is trending at 20 to 40 inches of snowfall at this point. We see a 34.3. That's mostly going to be exclusive for mountaintops, those 30 inch amounts, obviously. We could see some 15 to 20 inch amounts for 
some more medium elevation regions. But yes, we are expecting extremely large amounts of snowfall with this snowstorm. And with the track that it's taking, it doesn't really matter what happens. As long as it takes that track, we will see, uh, you know, one to two feet of snowfall plus easily with this storm. Let's move on to our Canadian model's total snowfall. And I'm not going to go over the amounts again because I don't want to waste your time. But this model also calls for a very large amount of snowfall, possibly even more. And it's not too different with the locations, although it does spread that heavier snowfall into southern Montana a lot more than the European model did. Now, finally, to close out the video, let's go over that severe weather threat with the second more major storm. And as you can see, this is our, again, our convective available potential energy or thunderstorm food. And we are looking at 1,000 to 2,000 amounts and even 2,000 to 3,000 amounts there in those oranges and reds. Typically, we're looking for at least 1,000 for severe weather to take place. So when you have two or 3,000 amounts, you have plenty. You have plenty for severe weather to take place. We're going to be watching this closely. As with the first one, the Storm Prediction Center is also uh, keying in on this one as well for day six. They have a 15% chance of severe weather within 25 miles of a given location here uh, in the surrounding regions uh, of the Oklahoma City region and kind of the Dallas-Fort Worth region there on the outer skirts of that. Uh, but you can see the regions on screen there. Our confidence tab is at a four out of six, which is still above 50% confidence, uh, but we need to really work out the fine details before I'll move up into confidence. Uh, but our confidence is overwhelmingly high that this storm will take place to some degree, so just know that. For today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, what kind of severe weather threat do you think we're taking a look at with these two storms? How severe will it be? And James Moore said, I believe it will be a moderate severe weather event but not a major one. And I definitely agree. I think something like an enhanced risk, I wouldn't be surprised to see a moderate risk, but I'm kind of keying in on an enhanced risk, especially for that first one. The second one is a bit more of a question mark. It doesn't really matter what I think about that though, but that's just my prediction. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, Bill Crates, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Larry LePan, Mandy Birchfield, and Patrick Strickland. I would also like to thank our Diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Cindy Klein, Alan Goodmaben, Bill Dallas, Gary's, John Khaleesi, Dwight Balin, Stephen Cornetthal, and Thomas D. Barr as well. If you'd like to join this Patreon end screen of the day, you can do so by joining our very awesome Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I uh, would also to thank our channel members, Catbite, Stephen Fan, and Jeremy Cox as well. That'll be located next to the subscribe button down below if you are interested in joining. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I'll see you guys in the next video.